Welcome back to the Backroads Podcast, where we will talk about the adventure within the adventure. Pat and Ashley's road trip across the valley and beyond. I'm Andrew. They need no introduction, but they are the dynamic duo, the celebrities of TVA, our very own Leslie Nope and Ann Perkins. But unfortunately, little Sebastian could not make it into the pod today, but we do have Pat and Ashley. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Um, you can be our Jerry, Larry, Terry, maybe. I'm cool with that. Yeah, that works. Absolutely. Um, so we just got back from Oxford, Mississippi, and I'm no stranger to Oxford, Mississippi. I've been there a bunch of times. It's always a great place to be. It's such a cute little southern town with so many cool things there. But Ashley, that was your first time going to Oxford, right? Yeah, it was my first time ever being in Oxford. Last year we went to Tupelo and that was my first time being there. So I've only ever really driven through Mississippi. Um, but it was so fun being in Oxford. You were started to talk about it, but their downtown area, it's called the square. We got to tour all around it. Honestly, the shopping was so good. I was just bummed. We didn't have more time. It was such a neat place. There was, we went to square books and they had mm. like four different locations and there was great coffee shops and restaurants. And it was just a really nice place to spend the afternoon. And honestly, all of Oxford was just so cute. It was. I, I really enjoyed going. Of course, my daughter goes to school there. Yes. And so, you know, one of my favorite things was getting to spend a little bit of time with my daughter, Sophie. So that was that was special. But, oh, the square, the square books. And they had so many different, you know, they had like a rare book mm -hmm. store. They had a children's bookstore, uh, you know, the regular bookstore. Oh, yeah. They had it all. And Pat and I are huge readers, yeah. so it was like cruel and unusual punishment to be <laughs> right. filming in a bookstore and like not not being able to like really yeah. go and buy yeah. books. Like, I think Pat, you ended up. I got a couple books. Uh, yeah, over there. yeah, I did. I was able to pull through, but you know, I could have spent. I could have spent a day in there and we didn't get, to, I would have loved to have seen what some of the first editions were that they had oh, at the rare books for, you know, I would have liked to have seen what, you know, just what they had, but. And it was just really neat just to see, you know, we've been in a lot of these towns all over the Southeast mm -hmm. and I really like getting the opportunity just to see what each different downtown looks like. Yeah. I mean, there's always different similarities of, you know, similar, you know, like little restaurants, little shops, whatever, but seeing how each town kind of takes their spin on it and like what yeah. they, what they're proud of showing off in their town and like what they want people who come and visit to see is always nice. I mean, of course, seeing the Ole Miss helmet. Lord, was there a lot of a lot of uh, light blue and red? I mean, we got to go on campus. We did, yeah. That was. Did you tour there with Sophie at all? Had you been? No, no. Um, she was accepted and um, into the PhD program, and so she knew. You know, once she got that, she was pretty much set on going there. And uh, so, no, we. We went to Oxford when we helped her move. So that gotcha. was uh, August a year ago. And so, yeah. Yeah. Man, Oxford in August. I'm sure. <laughs> no. We went at the right time of the summer. Yes. Yeah. We were we were yeah. blessed for the temperature down there. Because when we shot in Memphis and Tupelo last season, yeah, it was one of those. It was so hot. You walked outside and you were automatically damp. Like, oh. it like, like dried every piece of yeah. hair you ever had. It was yeah. so hot. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Oxford's so cool. And like you, you kind of talked about it earlier, like we get to see all these really cool downtowns and like what makes these towns so special. And, yeah. you know, there was a lot of great moments from this trip. I personally love going to Roanoke. I thought that was such a unique thing we got to see. And I've been to Oxford so many times. I didn't know that William Faulkner's house was like a stone's throw away from campus. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Faulkner's house. And especially that it was from the 1930s mm -hmm. when, when he first took it over, I guess, mm -hmm. and lived there uh, until he passed away. But just the house itself. I mean, I just love seeing all the touches from that time period. And then, Things that had been in his family, his his personal library was really yes. great. The typewriter that he used. Uh, I type. was interested in one of the neat things that we got to see. Um, 
he wrote on his walls. Yes. I mean, oh, we, I so love that. I feel like when you go in these historic homes, they're always so pristinely kept. Like I've been to Biltmore, I've been to some other places yeah. in more Knoxville. And they're always like so nice, so fancy, so pristine. But to see like his writing on the walls, outlining this book that he was writing, Right. I just thought was really cool. Like just to see the writer's process and all of that. I mean, well, I thought that was really funny. And then there was the story about uh, the day after he passed away. He he was against having a radio or a TV or any um, kind of electrical appliance like that. Up and through the, like the he lived, he like lived through the, like the sixties, right. right? And so when he passed away the day after his wife went and got an air conditioner and had it put in her bedroom. Oh, I thought that was kind of a fun, funny story. Great. Very telling about their relationship, yeah. I think. Could you imagine just living there with no air conditioning? Like, uh, we take that for granted, but like living in Mississippi Me. in the summer with no air conditioning? Right. Absolutely right. not. No. I just think the grounds of Roanoke were yeah. really beautiful because oh. it was like park nearby. There was yeah. all of these trees. And I think, Pat, wasn't it you that was telling us that your husband had a professor that like went to Roanoke? I did. Uh, he he decided one day that he was just going to go to Faulkner's house, see if he was home, which sounds crazy now. But, you know, apparently this professor did do that. And uh, Faulkner was just up in a tree. Oh, okay. You know? okay. He needed to. He needed to get a better view. Yeah, since yeah. Faulkner is a notable short king. Yeah, go yeah. Ahead and address <laughs> or he now. needed to be up in those tall cedar trees. But yeah, Roanoke was beautiful. And then after that, I had probably one of the best meals of my life. Oh yeah, we got to go to Big Bad Breakfast, which is uh -huh. a staple in Oxford. And I am a sucker for all breakfast food, and that place hit the spot in every single way. Yeah. Absolutely. What'd you get, Pat? I got um, oatmeal pancakes, maybe with blueberries. I think and they were so Ooh, oh. they were so good, Man. and a nice big cup of coffee. It was a uh, actually I got iced coffee. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I got I ice fancy. Yeah. yeah, Pat's got a classic iced coffee order. You just do iced coffee, no sugar, no milk, and you're ready to roll, right? And, yeah, no sugar, no cream. She just needs just needs her caffeine. Yeah, and the owner, he was such a cool dude, too. Yeah. And, you know, I worked in restaurants well before I was here at TVA, so it was really cool to kind of pick his brain as, like, a chef. Like, I wouldn't call myself yeah. a chef, but, like, yeah. it was very cool to talk to him about, like, how he made their signature dish. He was just working on the line, and he's throwing his biscuit and gravy in a yeah. styrofoam cup, and oh, one day they're like, yeah, let's make that a dish. And sure enough, it's like their signature dish on their menu. And yeah. it was awesome. And, and I know you guys got to pick his brain a little bit. And what, what were some of the high points for y'all? I mean, honestly, just learn, like kind of seeing how like, I mean, breakfast is my favorite meal. Mm -hmm. Like breakfast for dinner is notoriously, I had it two, two nights ago. Yeah. Uh, it's notoriously a go-to meal for me. So going to a place like this was awesome. But it was interesting because, you know, the chef was talking about, you know, a lot of times people forget about breakfast or they don't really put a lot of importance to it or, right. you know, it's just kind of, you know, th there wasn't a lot of people that were really trying to elevate that quite as much. And so he wanted to start that. And just like the atmosphere that he created in the restaurant, it wasn't like a fancy brunch place. Mm -hmm. Like it was comfortable. It was cool. You could have a cup of coffee, go hang out. Like it was just a great environment. Everyone there was great. And the food was so good. And oh, also, so um, we all had a really fun time with their different like merch. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Um, I got some hot sauce. Mm -hmm. I also got a sticker and it looks like a stick of butter or a stick of lard. And it <laughs> says, lard have mercy. Love that. <laughs> Love that. And it was one of my favorites. We're forgetting our huge celebrity moment that we got in Oxford. We talked about square books, but we also got to sit down oh. with the Mississippi native author, Greg Isles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And and that was cool. to hear him talk about, you know, his new book and talk about his time yeah. in Mississippi and growing up in Mississippi. You know, we enjoyed that conversation. He was he was quite a guy. Yeah, I and he's such a Mississippi man to his core. Like he had so many good quotes about like 
coming back home to mm -hmm. be part of the progression Russian. of Mississippi. Yeah. I thought that was really special to hear from him. And, you know, he talks about his author buddies. Like, we know them. Oh. He's like, yeah, me yeah. and Steve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he called him Steve. And I was like, Stephen King? King? Yeah. 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 And, you know, it was pretty cool. Ashley did some really good research and got to talk to him about his band that he is in with Stephen yeah. King. Yeah. I mean... I did a project in high school about uh, Amy Tan, this American author, and she was also a part of that band. So I, it was kind of a cool connection yeah. when we were sitting down talking with Greg and he's like, oh, yeah, seeing Amy. And he's like talking about this person that I wrote like a 30 page paper on when I was 17. It was just he was really cool. And it was really cool to talk to. And I mean. I mean, anyone who's like an author who's a part of a band with other authors and it's they do really a lot cool. of charity work yeah. and they're called the Rock Bottom Remainders. So, yeah. Yeah. And my favorite of his stories about that was when Stephen King uh, sang um, The Reaper, Don't Fear the Reaper, <laughs> you know, yeah. and how weird an experience <laughs> yeah. that was. Like, of course you know? he yeah. was. Yeah, it makes I a mean, lot of sense. I, would, I, would, I was really, I didn't know I needed to know what Stephen King's karaoke song would be. <laughs> but it's good that we got to hear that from Greg. Yeah. Yeah, we got to do so much fun stuff in Oxford. And we also got to visit Magnolia Combined Cycle Plant as well. The oh. best, we saved the best for last talking about Oxford. Yes. And, and you know what was so... The one thing I loved about that was when they took us out to the uh, where the water was coming down, oh, the, the yeah. Steam. steam. Yeah. And uh, there was, you know, much different from last year. There was a sure. breeze boat blowing oh, yeah. and it was just uh, it was just a lovely space to be. You wouldn't think about that at being at a gas plant, but it, it was really, really nice. It was. a Yeah, we couldn't have asked for more perfect weather in Oxford. Yeah. But yeah. no, when we were at Magnolia, it was really cool to walk around and just to meet all the different, uh, again, we're going to talk about it every time, right. meeting all of our fellow co-workers mm -hmm. um, at these plants is honestly my favorite part because these are folks that we, that Pat and I and Andrew, mm -hmm. you too, yeah. may not have an opportunity to get to talk sure. to and to be able to hear what they're doing and hear, um, you know, all their different unique jobs. And, you know, there was one person at Magnolia who she had been there since before TVA had purchased, purchased that it. plant. Yes. And she is still there today. So yeah. that was just really neat to just sit and talk with her for just a few minutes in the control room and just to hear all of the different ways that we're generating power in these different ways all over the valley. Yeah. And Brian Holt, uh, who actually gave us the tour, was was so knowledgeable and so friendly. Yes. You know, he was so helpful and had a great sense of humor <laughs> as we were walking around. You know, uh, he he would uh, tell us that our next thing we were going to be, uh, you know, strung oh. up. Uh, we were going to climb up some <laughs> huge ladder. And we're like, oh, I don't think so. But don't say that because they might want to do that. <laughs> yeah, we have to be careful. Sometimes, listen, Pat and I do perform all of our own stunts. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we are our own stunt women. That is true. Uh, our own. I'm the driver. We're the right. Like we do a lot. So whenever we're looking at like five flights of stairs, I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna climb this, and you're gonna film me doing it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's very funny. Uh, a little behind the scenes, too. Um, every once in a while, we talk about if Ashley doesn't want to do something, we're just going to put her rings on my fingers and, and I'll, like, be the one that goes in the helicopter. So if you see just a hand shot in the future, just know it's probably me. It's, me. it's him. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew is my – Andrew, you can be my my backup. I'm cool with that. Yeah. And it, it was really cool. You know, we always talk about the people. And it was really special to meet all the people there. Yes. And there's such a level of – appreciation that we get for coming but like it's really on our end that i feel very appreciative that they welcome us in yes. these situations because yes. like we show you guys what it's like but they're still doing their jobs when we're uh, there you know absolutely yeah you know they welcome us into their house and and it's it's always you know it's always a great experience at least for me oh so, absolutely yeah. and i think just them taking the time to explain to us like what they're doing, why it's important. And also just like on the simple level too, it's yeah. really helpful to learn how are we making this power? How do we, yeah. when we're right. at a, this gas plant, how are we using this? How are we using the fuel? How, how does it create the megawatts that we need to power for 
what is it, over 10 million people. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it is, it's really impressive that level of work that goes in. And I mean, they're all scheduled and everybody knows what they're doing and they're all there working towards, you know, it's really cool to see everyone it working is. toward like a common goal. And that goal being to provide this power to all over the service territory. Yeah. And you know, it's cool to see what our energy system of the future looks like too. It's part of our big plan. You know, we really have a focus on renewables too. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, the combined cycle plants, they play a big part in where we're going in the future. And it's just really cool. We talk about getting behind the curtain all the time. Like these are big overarching energy things, right? Where it's kind of hard to understand, yeah. but once yeah. you actually talk to the people, they are really good at breaking down very complex subjects for us. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. We are very fortunate for the team. Yeah. If you can explain it to me and Pat, how, how it works, works, then you're golden. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was great. And Oxford was wonderful. And Magnolia was fantastic. But we do get to go to a pretty cool spot next week as well. Lynchburg, Tennessee. Uh -huh. Now, Pat. I saw your eyes shine a little bit. What are you excited for in Lynchburg? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Would that be Jack Daniels? Yes, the <laughs> one and the only. Another short king, might I add. Uh, What's tiny? <laughs> he was all of 5'4". Notice you're talking to a fellow short king here. That's taller um, than Jack Daniels. But yeah, we're really excited to go there. I have never been there, and it's such a legendary brand. Um, yes. We get to see what, how they make it, where they make it, who makes it. This is like our very own how it's made. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And it, it, it's going to be so much fun. And I, I really cannot wait to get there. And we got some other fun stuff in store there in Lynchburg as well. Yes, we do. Can't wait. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, we are looking forward to next week, like I said. But for now, that wraps up another episode of Backroads here with Pat and Ashley. The Leslie Nope of our group here and our Ann Perkins as well. We thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to listen to us. And we appreciate you so, so, so much. You can find us on all major podcast carriers. And of course, you can watch us on YouTube. We'll see y'all next week. Mm -hmm.